and it's it's possible to model model the output in in red screen uh, and uh, and Watson, they're both free programs that are available at Entercan's site. Um, but R R Rob Dumont, who I trust implicitly in all this, says two four by eight collectors will get to 2,100 kilowatt hours a year, and uh, he's it's, it's starting to look like that's just what we're going to do. So. Um, the the uh, and also I mean I, by all means this is an area you know go to the people selling the materials Harold at Trimline uh, locally made panels excellent uh, they've got terrific specs uh, he he's he he can uh, uh, he can steer you right in terms of equipment uh, alternately Sedmec in Calgary handles the Interworks systems which are a plug and play more close to it uh, system. Um, we, we certainly learned the lesson on the Mill Creek House. It's a much, much simpler system. We've had a lot less trouble, and it seems to be performing quite nicely. So, um, so when it comes to, to designing the PV system, I think uh, again, I would I would uh, go to an expert like Gordon, um, or or. Uh, um, and 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 gets this stuff is very expensive, and uh, an improper installation, not getting the strings right, that kind of thing can can uh, mean that you get less output for your your very expensive investment, uh, and um, uh, it, you know it's it's a little bit dangerous as well. It's really worthwhile to uh, uh, to take a course if you're thinking about doing it yourself, and and get uh, otherwise get get experienced help. Uh, uh, and expertise, um, but in, in in designing the roof to accommodate them, uh, again think about the fact that these these are going to be up there for 30 to 40 years. Um, they seem to be lasting longer than were than was originally uh, predicted, and and uh, try to get a roofing material that will match, so that you're not having to to move them to re replace the roof. By and large, the the area that they cover will uh, extend the life. It'll keep the sun off the off the roofing, so it should enhance the life uh, anyway. But uh, it's it's worth thinking about how you're going to get up there, uh, whether it's going to shed snow. We we made a little mistake on the on the Riverdale project. Uh, we've got a little bench up there that made it very easy to 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 uh, mount them, but uh, this winter when we had that big dump of snow, it, it held a lot of snow for, for quite quite a bit too long. The other two winters, it, it, it didn't seem to do that, uh, but just the, the type of dump we got uh, meant that the the space that we left at the bottom was not quite adequate, so we lost, uh, oh, you know, a few hundred uh, kilowatt hours for sure, possibly more. Um, and, and angling the system you want to to make to maximize production over the year, um, a PV is very encouraging and exciting. It, the cost is coming down fairly dramatically. Uh, um, putting putting it all together, the chart shows the the total energy consumption for each of the these houses, and and then how we're meeting it. Uh, in 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 Riverdale, we've got about a, a 40 60 split between solar thermal and and uh, photovoltaic, and uh, and then we shifted to to um, you know. Tw 2080 sort of on, on Mill Creek and then 100% in Belgravia um, and and we'll probably go 100% in, in Parkland we're, we're still not quite sure uh, that's a that's an easy system that's, that'll be a huge huge uh, photovoltaic system it'll be ground mounted so we're not worrying about the area we've got quite a good site and we'll be able to use lower cost uh, modules the more efficient the modules the the the, uh, the higher the cost per watt so you know, the more roof area you can make, the 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 cheaper the installation. And in this case, we'll, as I say, we're ground mounting it, so it won't matter too much. Um, so there are a couple of sweet spots to look out for. One of them is Interguide 86, and I'll talk about that in a more detail next. And the other one is is uh, 10,000 kilowatt hours a year. I mean, we we saw this number after the fact, but if you can get your consumption into that kind of range. Uh, a few really nice thing, things happen. You can get rid of the gas line. And when you get rid of the gas line, well, first of all, um, at that rate, the, the, the things that you would normally use gas for, the heating and domestic hot water, amount to about 6,000 kilowatt hours a year. Well, the difference between the cost of electricity and the, the cost of gas on 6,000 kilowatt hours a year amounts to about the difference in the fixed monthly charges. So you can actually burn electricity for the same cost. 
And at that point, you can put in electric baseboard heating instead of a $10,000 uh, uh, furnace. You can put in a lot less. You can use an electric hot water tank, which will cost four or $500, instead of a, a demand heater that, that uh, is going to cost $3,000. And, um, and, and with, those, with those savings, uh, you, can, you can pay for uh, some of the building envelope upgrade. But, but you're only going to get there on a good site. With, without the passive solar, it, it's not practical to, to try and aim this low, I don't think. I think the payback on insulation levels higher than what we've been working on uh, is, I, is very, very small. And uh, you're more likely to find it in better uh, in, in, on the electricity side, I think. So the other sweet spot is this $10,000 Alberta government rebate for reaching Energuide 86. Um, the, the cost of, of upgrading the building envelope is in the, the $15,000 to $16,000 range to get it to, to Energuide 86. And, and you don't need to be on a great site to get it to Energuide 86. It helps, but, but it's not essential. The, the, um, the Bonnie Dune house there is at Energuide 87, and uh, they, they got their energy audit. They did the online application, and two weeks later they got a check back for 10000 bucks. It's a very, very simple system. It uses an existing network of, of uh, interguide evaluators. It uses an existing standard. And uh, all you got to do is, is um, hit 86 and, uh, and, and uh, do this very simple application and get it, uh, get it modeled. So that, that um, uh, you know, in designing the house, Go a, go a few, aim for a few points high just in case something goes wrong. Because that, that uh, I mean, the next step back in this same program is if you get 80, Energuide 82, there's $3,000 available. And uh, for R2000, basically Energuide 80, it's $1,500. But um, really, really, uh, I mean, that, that, that I think is a game changer because it pays for most of the incremental cost and uh, uh, the the rest of it comes back to you easily in in the um, in the energy savings. So we've got four other houses under construction that are on target to get Energuide 86, and another eight uh, getting ready to start. So we're we're uh, we're hoping to to really make them suffer. So you know when you do this, it's really important to measure it. Uh, you know, and and net zero energy is really easy to measure. Basically, if your utility bill is negative, you made it. But we, we need to start assembling a, a, a database of what's working, what's working well, what's working not so well, what's not working at all, so that uh, we, we don't keep uh, reinventing the wheel and, and we you know, can just go straight to this with, with no fuss in the, in the future. And, and um, you know, there's a tendency to be optimistic about this and, and uh, uh, you know, succumb to wishful thinking. It's, it's really important uh, to, you know, measure it and, and accept the grim realities and, and, uh, and, and learn from it and, and um, uh, you know, not, not, not assume it's going to be, um, I mean, building, builders are natural optimists. It just uh, goes with the, with the uh, any, any, I mean, building is an inherently optimistic thing to do. You're assuming there's a future that's going to be good, that's going to be worthwhile and all that kind of stuff. So anyway. It's easy to get carried away, but but uh, so so in the in interest of that, we're in in Bob's house actually. He's he's let us put 60 thermocouples in various places in his house, particularly in the in the slab at different elevations. And so we've we've got a grad student from mechanical engineering has put a data logger on it, and we're we're starting to uh, to monitor that. So. So I, I think that from these first three houses, we're going we're to learn a tremendous amount and hopefully be able to do better in the future. 